It's July the 26th, 2012. I'm Mike Benedetti. This is 508, a show about Worcester. Brendan Mellican isn't on the show today. Uh, there's been a lot of negative things happening in Worcester, I think, in the last few weeks. You know, violence, concern over what's going to happen with the Palladium, uh, a certain amount of uh, problems with the Summer Nationals. Um, but there's something really positive that happened. And we're going to spend, uncharacteristically, most of this show on that positive thing, which is that Stone Soup had a groundbreaking. Now, Stone Soup, you'll know, is this legendary arts and activist space in the city of Worcester. All kinds of awesome groups operated out of this building on King Street, this old three-story house. Uh, and then in the spring of 2009, there was an electrical fire, and the building hasn't been usable since then. The groups involved with Stone Soup, amazingly enough, uh, you know, kept it together, like kept their organization together, kept moving forward on trying to figure out how can we fix this building and how can we get people back in this building? Because it was an amazing source of synergy. I mean, it was a, you, you could just sit there as we did a few times and like we could tape this show and all kinds of amazing people would be walking back and forth and you could just get them on the show. It was the kind of place where you stop to get a cup of coffee and you're going to meet people who are doing all kinds of great art and making, trying to make a difference in the city in all kinds of great ways. Uh, so it's wonderful that people are going to be able to come, go back in there. Now, this groundbreaking was more or less an excuse to let people tour the building and announce that there has, in fact, been reconstruction work happening for a few months now. Uh, there's still a lot of cosmetic problems with the building, but structurally, it's getting back together. You'll notice that there's some missing walls and things in this video. But they're talking about having a ribbon cutting for people to come back and operate again in Stone Soup in October, which is fantastic. And walking around in that building really brought a tear to my eye. I have so many, uh, you know, good memories of, uh, of working with people out of that place. So we're going to spend the first 17 minutes of this show taking a tour through Stone Soup as given by Jen Burt on the groundbreaking day. We'll start over here. So we can't actually go in here, but... Um, Kind of here in here. So this is where the fire started, um, and this is going to be where Erna Bike is going to be. It was where it was before. You can see all these great pictures of Erna Bike. Yeah. They're an awesome organization. Um, and we're actually going to expand this wall that way. So all, all where the stage was, that's where we're going to have even uh, more space. And that'll go. We'll have a bigger bike shop, and then we'll have a huge event space above this. So you'll get to. I'll point that out when we get. Up. So I guess construction crews have been here since about April, and it's been kind of, you know, we have a bunch of different groups coming in, so it's a lot of different coordinating. But, you know, they've installed these windows, and when we go up onto the porch, I'll show you, they completely redid a lot of the woodwork on the porch. So. so you can see they actually took all of these columns off of the porch, these were all charred, and they sanded them down, they wow. repainted wow. them. We're actually missing one, and they somehow found one that matches. I don't know how that happened. And so that was just like one little piece of it that like took a ton of work. This is a historical building, so to get that back was amazing. And next, we're gonna, we're gonna watch a video next, our stone suit video. Oh, good, we have our narrator here. <laughs> <laughs> so come on over here. Narrated by. <laughs> so uh, this is a, a short four minute video about Stone Soup. You get a picture of, if you weren't part of it beforehand, I see a lot of you were, but... Forced from one rented location to another, a fluid yet committed group of Worcester community activists and artists said, enough. We need a permanent home. Their dreams became a reality in December of 2006 when they pooled resources and purchased a building that had been vacant for several years previously a tutoring center and teacher supply store. Dozens of groups soon made this centrally located space their home, and named after the fabled stone soup, each brought their piece of a wonderful shared magical meal. The soup's ingredients already existed in the community.
Walking through the space on any one day, you might see a group of artists working on a giant homemade printing press or t-shirt machine, a gaggle of kids rehearsing their student-written play or meeting to discuss their own curriculum, a mountain of bikes being made useful for anyone wanting to volunteer and earn a free bike or share mechanical skills. Come visit the Earn a Bike Program! You might see a team of urban youth producing a video about the environmental justice movement in Worcester. Ex-prisoners getting organized to change the unjust criminal record law and start a cooperative business. It is our job and our duty to create resources and build opportunity to unlock the hidden potential that is found that is lost in so many people. An anti-war poster and puppet making session. A kitchen busy with Food Not Bombs volunteers. Neighbors using the computer lab and library, a Spanish open mic tertulia, or a union meeting. Cross-pollination became natural, even inevitable between the member groups, together organizing successful peace and justice marches and block parties. No big outside funders, no thick bureaucracies, no more no trespassing signs, no central authority, just a membership-driven collection of people taking action to lay the foundation of a new world, one that fits our many cultures, worlds, dreams. And like here, it was like my workplace, but then they had a library downstairs and I loved to read, so it was like my leisure place and then they had computers. And I had a key to all of this. Like, it was just like a whole new like adventure to me, just to like come into Stone Soup. I was just always here. Stone Soup was just, it's just my place, you know, like Worcester doesn't have that many places for kids to like just go hang out. Then, late in the evening of March 26th, 2009, while no one was in the building, a devastating fire struck Stone Soup. The three alarm blaze caused heavy fire, water, and smoke damage to almost the entire building, displacing the member groups until major renovations are done. It just it hurts really bad to see like a place that's so beautiful that that homes so many like ideas, so many different like I don't even know. It's just. It's crazy how this could happen to such a beautiful place. Community support poured in with hundreds of volunteers and partner agencies showing solidarity, salvaging the contents, and cleaning up the shattered glass and damaged visions. A late night crew of skilled graffiti artists livened up the boarded up windows with a message to all who love stone soup. Our dreams cannot be burnt to the ground. Out of these ashes, we rise. Stone Soup needs your help to rebuild and become an even stronger force for community and social justice. Your skilled hands we will put to work. Your monetary support we are relying on to make this all possible. Contact us or visit stonesoupworcester.org to make a donation or to get involved. Checks can still be mailed to Stone Soup at 4 King Street, Worcester, Massachusetts, 01610. Go this way. The next group can come into the video and I can answer more questions over here. But so this space over here is going to be um, the Epica office. So they, and they, you know, since they used to have a little office over there, and since the fire, their organization has just grown immensely. So they're going to actually need much more space. Um, I didn't realize. And you, uh, I want to like point out to you as we go through the building, you can see here. A lot of this woodwork was all smoke damage, um, and this, you look at this and look at it later in the building, you'll see it takes like hours to just stand there and like scrub it, um, so you can see that kind of work. So yeah, you can see Epica has some information, if you want to grab anything from there.
Um, and if there's anything you have more questions about, you can ask me and I can refer you to someone or maybe answer them about different organizations. Jen, I can talk to you about Ethica. So that's for earn a bike. It's the earn a bike place. Yeah, so that you can now look down and you can see that's the earn a bike. This is where the fire was, and they've done a lot of like knocking out a lot of that. Um, and this this will be the kitchen, and that will move that way. Um, we'll have a whole big event space in here. So before we could only have about 40 people in here for big events, so that's not a very big event. You know, our anniversary party has way more than that. So we'll be able to have you know a, about 100 people, uh, and then we're also going to have a library in here. Um, which has grown since we left here too. So, and there's more stuff in the basement, but you can't. But it's unsafe to walk yes. down. And then we have office here. Ooh, so, what office is going to be in here? Um, that's a good question. I don't think anyone has. Oh, this is going to be the computer lab. So, one of the bi one of the biggest resources we had before the fire was a computer lab. You know, it had three computers, but there was always people using it. A lot of the neighborhood kids used it. Sometimes people would use it just to check their email, work on different things. So, th this is nice too because it'll be you can close the doors now and be nice and contained. Because before it was in there, noise would kind of drill. But you can see, well, as you look up here, like. This is where we scrubbed, and this is where we haven't scrubbed. So Whoa. that's the level of uh, smoke and water damage that it takes just a really long time to... And then you can see some kind of before and after photos. Some pictures of the graphic shop, and if you come in here, so in here is going to be the Stone Soup graphic shop. This is where they were before. It's a group of artists just working on a lot of visual art. They had uh, a printing press, they make t-shirts, and so we'll be back in here, you know, low cost to be able to use some of the equipment. The printing press is this beautiful homemade printing press. And then we're actually not going to go up to the third floor because it's a little treacherous to people up there. But we're going to do special guided tours if you want to go up there. But it's, you can't really see very well, it's kind of a little weak spot in the floor. So, but that is going to be completely redone to be a uh, residence. So we'll have a three bedroom apartment up there. And then we'll go this way. Open for offices 
or whatever. If you don't want an office, you want a studio, like artist space, all these different. So if you know anyone in the Worcester area, a group that wants space, this could be yours. So, and this is, you know, you can see also this room was like way less smoke damage. They didn't actually have to really scrub it. Downstairs, and I have a couple things more things to point out. Even if it's not done yet. Do people have any questions? You know, it's so fire damage. It's so severe. Yeah. It's amazing. It can be brought down. You know what I mean? Well, you know, the thing is that, like, I don't know, it's a cliche, but they don't build houses. Say, say it again. They don't build houses like uh, the like structure of it, and, like the detailing of it. It's just it, everyone that came in here that's like a builder or an architect was like, oh, we have to save the building, you know? Like, I mean, and like, where do you, you don't get that anywhere else? Right. And I think it's really nice to be able to have. I can go to a lot of other um, kind of community spaces or offices mm -hmm. that just feel um, sterile right. and I think a lot of this building made it feel you know the beauty of it, it makes yeah. it that much home it's and it's a home it used to be a home you know so it made it feel a little bit more yeah um, well it's nice to know that the structure was so strong yeah yeah, yeah. when was it originally built do you know in 1890 huh. this is yeah it was you know, it's one of those Worcester buildings that, like, uh, old, you know, someone owned the factory, and this was, like, they built this house really with, like, and these sliding doors are, like, uh -huh. there's, like, such detail that you really put, like, kind of a lot of his money. This, this neighborhood used to be for all the factory owners uh -huh. back in 1890. Um, and so... Oh, yeah, and then this is just, you know, this is, you can see some of the work that these guys have done. It's like they, they framed out all of these windows right here. That was like each individual window, they built this. They have a whole model that they've done. And we got these, you know, energy efficient windows. And, yeah, that's the kind of like overview. Like, so we're going to end up with a much more energy efficient. Yes. Yeah. yeah, we're going to have, you know, are there other are there other green things that are notable besides the windows? Yeah, so we're blowing in like uh, insulation, so it's really, really well insulated. There's actually you can probably outside there's like the tubing, and that big truck in the back is actually has all of the equipment for that. And we're gonna have radiant flooring, which is really exciting because it's it's this head, yeah because this yeah this building was built to cool. If you like, we were in this building before in the winter. It was really cold, and it's also the you know the air comes in from this door and just goes up. So rather than you know by having the heat be in the floor, it's gonna as opposed to you know, some sort of hot air or something like that. That's just kind of heating something that's gonna go up to the attic. And then, so, but yeah, those are the big. Energy. We're talking about kind of later putting on some solar stuff that'll be down the line. I don't know what I'd love Yeah. If you find to the Tim Tudor, who I recommend talking to, he's a great guy. He can tell you lots of those details. And, and Jen, when is the, uh, let me get a better lighting, when yeah. is the ribbon cutting going to be? October. What day? I can't give you a day. What time? Like, what time of day? Oh, it's gonna be in the evening. So All the right. people that couldn't come to this event can come and like, you know, really celebrate. That's fantastic. Yeah. Congratulations. Thank you, Mike. I want to cover two quick things here at the tail end of the show. Uh, one is something that we were talking about on Facebook and we didn't really have a chance to talk about on the show, which is the question of, are there re retail places in Worcester that are so good that they're actually better than ordering online? There was a time when ordering online was not the greatest experience in the world, but now it's getting pretty good and it's pretty amazingly convenient. Uh, especially Amazon is, is right now going forward with the plan to open up a lot more distribution centers. 
so that conceivably Amazon will be able to fill some orders same day or a lot more orders overnight, making it even more challenging for local retail to compete. I mean, if they can do a same day delivery, then you know, you order the thing in the morning and it's waiting for you when you get home at the end of the day. Why would you why would you go down to the store? Well, you know, there's a lot of things that retail a re physical retail can provide that you're not going to get online. The question is are there Worcester are there Worcester retailers who are able to operate at that level? Um, to me, you know, HBML was the classic example of this. This is Happy Birthday, Mike Leslie, the junk shop at 420 Pleasant Street. It was just a crazy space. I mean, it was all, it was all, the space was almost just like uh, an art project by itself. Somebody's wheeling their window shut here across the street because there might be a thunderstorm later this evening. Uh, HBML was a fantastic place. I mean, HBML was like being in some sort of curio shop from an old movie. Um, and just being in that space was, uh, you know, they should have charged admission because honestly it was kind of like being in a theatrical situation there. Um, I recently bought a shirt at Rocco's, which is a, a men's clothing shop on the corner of Chandler and Park. And that was another place where it was just fantastic to be able to go in there, you know, basically buy a shirt about as fast as I could buy it online, but in a really wonderful environment and with somebody really knowledgeable, you know, giving a little bit of feedback on fit and uh, style and things like that. Uh, a lot of clothing, I mean, a lot of food places are like that. I, on, obviously, people are not really buying a lot of groceries off of Amazon, although you can. They're still, you know, being there and seeing the food and touching the food is still wonderful. Obviously, places like Ed Hyder's in Worcester are providing a really pretty solid uh, environment for buying food. Um, those are the only ones that really came to my mind, and HBML is closed, so Rocco's and Ed Hyder's would be the two ones. But people on uh, Facebook had some more ideas. We've got some votes for Trunk and Disorderly, which is a consignment store that's open on Main Street, on North Main Street. And uh, I feel like probably thrift shops in general could fall under this, um, under this list. You know, most thrift shops are pretty sterile, but it's still kind of wonderful. I mean, maybe the envir physical environment's sterile because the clothes are so crazy and, you know, and jumbled feeling, or to try to counteract any residual feeling of that that people might have. But Trunk and Disorderly was one that people suggested. That's entertainment, the comic shop. Um, and that's actually kind of a cool one that a couple people mentioned. It's actually it's particularly cool because like a lot of what they're selling there is books, right? It's comic books. Um, and that's really, you know, Amazon's bread and butter. It's been a place where people have been really competitive and retailing online for a long time. So the fact that people are still excited about a physical store in that space says something. Uh, Baton Gift, which is in Tatnik, uh, was, a, was one suggestion. C.C. Lowell, the art shop, was one. I go to C.C. Lowell sometimes, although I, I don't buy a lot of art stuff, so I don't know about that. Dr. Gonzo's condiment store, condiment producer. Uh, the Habitat for Humanity Restore, which is really cool. It's sort of like a thrift store for like uh, architectural stuff and home furnishing stuff. Like if you're serious, like I've got some amazing stuff out of this place, like way better than the average thrift store. The Restore is up off of, uh, off of uh, Park Avenue, Gold Star Boulevard up in there. Um, and then Barrow Hardware down in Webster Square. And yeah, and a hardware store is another place where you know, a really good hardware, like the hardware stores that I, at least I remember from being younger, were kind of awesome, right? Because, I mean, you could go in there and you could, like, describe the, I need, a, I need a such and such you could describe to the guy at the counter, and the old guy would be like, it sounds to me like you don't need a such and such, you need a such and such. Like, they could give you a lot of really good feedback, um, especially if hardware things are oftentimes things where you're, you know, you're, you're bringing in a washer or something. You're just like, I'm not even sure what this exactly is. Um, so until you have 3D scanners in your house, there's obviously buying physical hardware super important for the average homeowner. But um, I think it's awesome that people are, you know, thinking about places that they really love that are, that are selling stuff in the city of Worcester. Uh, you know, pe people who have, you know, these stores can be such a, such a source of community sometimes. Um, you know, as well as just like, I don't know, a nice recreational thing to do. Go shopping. Maybe you're not into it. I don't know. Last thing about this show I want to talk about is something bizarrely negative. Is just uh, uh, this week at the or last the last time there was a city council meeting. One of the things they talked about was the summer nationals. This this auto event that sort of shuts down a big chunk of uh, North Main Street uh, now every year. People get mad about it. There's a lot of drag racing and a lot of otherwise you know people doing loud noisy things with the cars in the city. And if you're not into it, you hate it. Uh, and city council, the city councilors are complaining about it this week. And Bill Eddy. Dear beloved Bill Eddy, for no reason at all, I guess, decides to, like, throw in some sort of diss of roller derby on top of that. I couldn't believe it, so I looked it up, and it's true. Drag racing on Main Street. What, we couldn't get the roller derby to come to town this year? I mean, because we're really reaching on this one. Anyways, I hope that you're having a great week in Worcester. I hope that all this negativity is not dragging you down. You know, I hope that you're out there doing what you love to do, racing cars, playing roller derby 
go into the store, rebuilding stone soup, whatever it might be. Thanks for watching this show. Brendan Melican Wall, God willing, be on next week. I'm Mike Benedetti. Thanks for watching. If you have any complaints, email us at pineandcoffee at gmail.com. Otherwise, we'll see you next week.